Hi, my name is Peter Gauss. I'm a consultant ophthalmologist in Southeast England, and I'd like to talk to you about selective laser trabecular blasty. First of all, we have to talk a bit about glaucoma, which is a condition where the optic nerve degenerates. We all have um, a slow degeneration of the, the optic nerve over our lifetime, but it's a very slow rate. If we look at the average cohort of uh, patients attending a clinic for glaucoma, which are on treatment, you can see that it's an exponentially higher rate of progression in that group, which is even higher if you have no treatment for your glaucoma. So what are we treating? Glaucoma is a neurodegenerative disease. In other words, nerve tissue is dying away and nerve tissue doesn't regenerate, which means the change is permanent. There's a huge variability in how rapidly people progress over their lifetime. And it's really important to identify if you are one of the progressing very rapidly because you need to be treated more aggressively. Lowering the eye pressure is still the primary goal for glaucoma treatment. And it's really key to understand a concept called target IOP, which is the intraocular pressure, where for that individual person, the rate of progression has been lowered to the extent where it's almost approaching just the standard loss from aging. And of course, it can be quite difficult to find exactly where you are. You need multiple tests and statistical analysis, but it's important to set a target and to reevaluate if you are still progressing at whatever target you had, that target needs to be reassessed. So it needs to be individualized and regularly revisited. How does uh, the eye regulate pressure? Well, fluid is made by this fleshy body behind the iris, the bit that gives the eye its color. And the fluid goes from the ciliary body through the pupil and in the gap between the iris and the cornea, there's a fine sieve called the trabecular meshwork where the fluid drains away. And if we zoom in on that meshwork, the meshwork provides the vast majority of drainage, up to 95% of all the drainage of fluid from the eye goes through there into channels behind and then gets taken away. This is also the area where the main blockage occurs with most glaucoma patients. And if we can address that, we um, significantly improve the pressure. Selective laser trabeculoplasty is selective by the definition that it's a very gentle laser. Compared to the old style argon laser trabeculoplasty where the laser actually caused structural damage, the selective laser trabeculoplasty is a gentle stimulation of the trabecular meshwork and we treat all the way around 360 degrees of the eye and it causes a biological reaction. Inflammatory cells move into the trabecular meshwork and that those gaps between the cells this, uh, are then cleared up from, uh, uh, from the debris that's blocking it to facilitate normal drainage again. So if we look at these electron microscope images, we can see on this one, the old star laser, argon laser trabeculoplasty, causing a big area of structural damage, whereas with selective laser trabeculoplasty, the trabeculum looks completely normal. Because it's a biological reaction, it can take one to three months to get the full result of your treatment, um, but we would uh, expect to see a, a steady lowering in intraocular pressure during this time. There was an excellent study done in 2019 called the LIGHT study, which is the best study to date looking at the conventional treatment, which is drops for glaucoma, compared to selective laser trabeculoplasty. And the study showed that patients who had SLT had better and more stable eye pressures. And at their three-year outcome, patients had not only better pressure control, but lower surgery rates. And almost three quarters of the patients were completely drop-free with um, progression rates reduced by about 50%. So a very significant outcome. So if we look at the, um, the numbers individually, we can see uh, significantly less patients progressed. And not only did they not need um, glaucoma drainage surgeries, but they also had a lower rate of patients needing cataract surgery. 
So the SLT patients, 74% um, of the patients were drop free. Um, most of these patients only needed one treatment with SLT, which was also brings me to another point that the treatment is repeatable. So if you are one of the patients where the effect starts dwindling with time, it can be done again. And there was only one um, patient that had a significant pressure spike in 776 patients treated. So the recommendation from this study was that SLT laser should be offered as a first line treatment for patients with open angle glaucoma or high pressure in the eye, ocular hypertension supporting a change in clinical practice. SLT has been the first line treatment in my personal practice for over three years now, and I've shared the excellent results uh, of the light study. So um, as the light study shows, uh, SLT laser is um, an excellent treatment for patients with glaucoma or ocular hypertension and was actually superior to the standard treatments uh, with drops to lower the pressure. So on the day of the um, SLT laser procedure, you will have drops uh, put in your eye to prepare the eye uh, for the laser and the drops can affect the vision a bit, make your vision blurry and commonly cause a little bit of headache across the top of the brow, which lasts for um, a few hours. The laser treatment itself is completely painless and afterwards you will receive some drops to be used in the eye, usually for about five to seven days uh, to ensure that you don't um, develop uh, any inflammatory uh, response to the laser. Um, because it's a very gentle laser, the vast majority of the patients don't feel anything at all. Uh, the eye um, has to be stabilized with a contact lens that is placed on the eye, which also has little mirrors in because the laser has to be aimed right in the angle between the iris and the cornea, which is not accessible in any other way. So the um, uh, person performing the laser will put some anesthetic drops in the eye to make sure that the contact lens doesn't irritate uh, and the laser itself shouldn't be felt. I have however had um, two or three patients over the years that said they did feel a little something and it, and it was usually people with very brown irises so a lot of pigmentation um, where they felt something but they didn't describe it as painful. <laughs> 